in one second. Year ago. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hope that everybody is doing well. Um, oh, I assume everybody knows who I am, but if you don't, uh, I'm Terrence Clark. I'm the president and CEO of the New York and New Jersey Minority Supply and Development Council. We're pleased that you all decided to attend what I think will be a very, a very informational uh, webinar that we're going to have this morning with the Metropolitan Transit Transportation Authority or MTA. Uh, I think most everybody has been on MTA, whether you've been on the bus, the subway, the Long Island Railroad. Uh, you've certainly been in or through an MTA facility. Uh, I know I certainly have. I was born in Brooklyn and spent uh, the greater number of my years on the subway. So uh, I'm very familiar with, with the uh, workings of MTA. They are also one of our uh, corporate members as far as our council is concerned. And so this morning, what we're going to get to is talking about the their capital plan. And as it relates to not only what is being spent and where, but also investments and opportunities that hopefully a number of you business owners can take advantage of to help in the growth and development of your business, as you well are aware that, you know, that is the major and primary goal of our council is to put you in front of opportunities and then you can decide if these opportunities are something that can be advantageous to your business. And so we're hoping that the information you get in the next hour or so will help toward that. So without going into a you know further and longer ado with Paul heard me speak. Uh, so it's my pleasure and honor to uh, introduce you to Lourdes Zapata. I've known Lourdes for quite some time. Lourdes currently serves as the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for the MTA. Uh, in charge of programs geared toward uh, the diverse business community. Uh, good morning, Lois. Hey, Terry, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, pleasure to be here with all of you this morning. Terry, thank you and your colleagues at the New York, New Jersey Minority Supplier Development Council for having us here. Uh, with you this morning. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Uh, as Terry referenced, I am the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at the MTA, which is the largest transportation network in North America. We are a trillion dollar a year organization. We service 5,000 square miles. We cover 14 counties in New York State. So as a South Bronx girl, I've been riding the subways practically all my life. And so just be having the opportunity to work at the MTA and understanding its impact and its reach really has been um, a wonderful experience for me, both personally and professionally. Here at, at headquarters, which is where I'm based, we manage six operating agencies. So under MTA, we include not just New York City Transit, but we also have our MTA bus uh, division, Long Island Railroad, Metro North, bridges and tunnels, as well as construction and development. And it is that team, and I'm joined this morning by my colleague, Jamie Torres Springer, uh, but that's the team that supports these agencies by identifying, developing, and building the capital infrastructure projects that are needed to renew and enhance the MTA's assets. Now, the MTA in and of itself has ranked for many years, number one out of the 97 New York State agencies and authorities in dollars paid to certified MWBEs. Last year alone, um, more than 35% of all of our contracting opportunities went to MWBEs. So that was over $740 million worth of spend with the MWBE community across 500 businesses and 78 million of that was uh, by utilizing our $1.5 million threshold for discretionary spending, which went directly to MWBE firms. Our spend with uh, DBE certified firms accounts for another $260 million worth of contracting. So all told, the MTA spends over a billion dollars a year, that's billion with a B, uh, with uh, working with certified MWBE, DBE, as well as our SDVOB businesses. So our impact and our engagement with the uh, with historically underutilized business community is extensive. We also have a number of programs designed to support our hub communities, starting with our small business development program, where we uh, provide uh, opportunities for emerging contractors to engage in some classroom training, on-the-job training, 
access to capital bonding and bidding opportunities. We have uh, within that program a smaller cohort of competitors and we can do direct contracting up to 1.5 million in our tier one and up to 5 million in our tier two spend. And we awarded almost $70 million worth of contracts last year alone to participants of our small business mentoring program. And we also, uh, as I referenced, make extensive use of our discretionary spend cap. We're at $1.5 million, and we spent about $86 million last year uh, with our small business community. And again, that's an excellent entree entry point for firms that are interested in doing business with the MTA. Uh, so we are here to serve. We are here to support. We want to make sure that we are casting as wide a net as possible to engage uh, hub firms in our contracting opportunities. We have a team here at the MTA within a Department of Diversity and Civil Rights that can assist you with getting your DBE certification if you're not already DBE certified. If you are in need of getting New York State MWBE certified, we can also provide that support. And as I referenced, we um, also will help you with accessing to bonding insurance and access to capital. So I'm looking forward to uh, continuing our partnership and, and mutually supportive work with the National Minority Supplier Development Council and hoping that you uh, you all that are here today will reach out to us early and often uh, to engage in MTA contracting opportunities. Now, as uh, Terry referenced today, we are hoping to be able to, we will be presenting to you an outline of the MTA's five-year capital plan. And as I referenced, I'm joined this morning by Jerry Torres Springer, who joined the MTA in 2001 as president of the MTA's construction and development department. So he's responsible for a better, faster, and cheaper delivery of the MTA's multi-billion dollar capital plan. Our last capital plan was $55 billion. Our next capital plan is running um, slight, just shy of, six, of $70 billion. And today you will have the opportunity to hear directly from, a, from Jamie what all that entails and what that incorporates. And again, just keeping in mind that it is a, a, a $70 billion contract of which there are extensive MWBE, DV, and SDVOB opportunities. And we'll speak more to that as well during our presentation. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, my friend and colleague, Jamie Torres-Springer. Great, Lourdes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm really pleased to be with you. I do have to correct something in my bio. You said I was joined in 2001. It was 2021. Um, just to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to date myself. It says 21, uh, my bad. Okay. You're right. You're right. I, <laughs> just, uh, it says 21, any, but my eyes said Yeah, less Lest anyone think I'm, uh, you know, ancient and stuck in my ways. Um, quite, quite, I like to think quite the opposite. Um, and uh, I, I'm really pleased to be here with you and want to thank Lourdes. Um, I, I think everyone who's, uh, Who's on this call? Um, if you haven't interacted with Lourdes, I'm sure you will soon. You 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 should know that you have a real strong advocate um, for small business, uh, minority women, disadvantaged business enterprises. And Lourdes, she's got a ton of experience. She's done this statewide. She's done this for Empire State Development, um, and she's really making waves at the MTA to uh, fight for uh, minority contracting, which is something that we all value a great deal. But we need. We've we've needed help from Lourdes to uh, to expand it and be more aggressive about it, and uh, you, you can really believe that you've got that advocate uh, here in Lourdes. And I also want to thank uh, Terrence Clark from the council for having us today and giving us this opportunity. So I just spend a few minutes, and then it's great to have a little conversation and really hear from you about what the barriers are for uh, contracting and what we can do about it. I want to just touch on first. Um, you know, what we're, uh, Lourdes gave us a little bit of a preview, um, but uh, what we're doing in terms of our current and next capital program, uh, and then um, get into, you know, it's very important to us. It's not just what we build, but how we build it uh, and who we contract with to build it. So I want to talk a little bit about our, our MWBE and DBE programs. Um, so uh, I, uh, I uh, Lourdes mentioned, I run uh, the construction and development agency at the MTA. We're a pretty new agency. We were created just before the pandemic about five years ago. And for those of you that have been contracting with the MTA for a while, um, you're probably tracking this, but we are now a consolidated agency that plans, budgets for, scopes, uh, designs, procures, 
manages delivery and execution all the way to closeout of all the capital projects for the entire MTA, projects big and small from stair replacements and electrical upgrades to you know, tunnel boring for the Second Avenue subway, the reconstruction of Penn Station, um, Penn Station access, these major mega projects. But the vast majority of what we do is really state of good repair, because as Lourdes said, we've got a trillion and a half dollar system that moves five million people a day. And our number one goal is to keep that system running safely and reliably. And that requires a huge amount of capital investment, um, particularly given that we have a hundred year old system that we're making an effort to modernize. So we are in the midst of a five-year, $55 billion capital plan right now. Um, uh, you know, the, you, you'll have uh, you'll have read um, uh, and be aware that uh, about a third of that is meant to be funded by uh, congestion pricing. Um, and, uh, you know, we are uh, somewhat in a, a pause on that work while uh, the governor and other elected official uh, leadership uh, sort out exactly how we're going to come up with that funding. But that doesn't, you know, that's a that's 15 of the $55 billion. So we have an enormous amount of contracting underway <clears throat> for the rest of the uh, $40 billion that we have remaining at the moment. Um, and there's a lot of work going on. We're delivering it better, faster, and cheaper um, and have lots of successes uh, to tout from that. Um, and I hope that uh, you're finding opportunities to uh, get engaged in the delivery of that program. Uh, our board just approved last month the next 25 to 29 capital program. Uh, we work by law in five-year increments. Uh, so um, we're in the midst of the 2020 to 2024 program. It'll wrap up at the end of this year. And then we're into the 25 to 29 program. Lourdes mentioned um, the, uh, the, you know, we did this through a needs assessment that looked at what we needed to do in our system to keep it running safely and reliably and make the improvements. Um, that make it easier to use the system. Uh, and based on that assessment, we came up with a $68.4 billion capital plan, um, right in line with inflation, really, from the last capital program. Um, and that was approved by our board last week. Um, it's uh, currently under consideration in Albany. Uh, and then, uh, you know, portions of funding for that have been identified. Other portions of funding will be looked at in the next legislative session. Um, and let me just give you a little thumbnail about what's in that program. It's got three overall goals. Number one, as I've been mentioning, frequent, safe, and reliable service, and then improving the customer experience and taking action on climate change. To achieve those goals, we're focusing on state of good repair, so replacing decades-old power systems, painting and waterproofing deteriorating structures in our subways, on our bridges, and on the railroads. Um, investing in re-signaling the system, uh, making resilience upgrades at stations, um, particularly uh, on, on Metro North and in the subway system. And then there are a lot of improvements uh, in addition to repairing and replacing structural elements at 150 subway stations and fully renovating 10 railroad stations, new fare gates, new technology, fiber, uh, you know, various new devices getting incorporated into the system to improve the customer experience, uh, and then making at least 60 more subway stations ADA accessible. And anybody who's worked with us in the system knows that those projects become incredibly complex because it's not just about adding an elevator. We really end up having to overhaul the whole station in order to, uh, you know, be able to provide the space for an elevator, uh, ADA accessible path of travel, uh, improved platform edge, and then the back of house, the, the, the electrical uh, and communication services to support uh, new elevators. Um, all of that requires suppliers and trades from every facet of the industry, from architects and designers and safety personnel to electricians, landscapers, concrete and tile workers, and so much more. Um, so, uh, you know, anyone who's sort of in a position to uh, advocate for um, the full funding of our capital program. We always appreciate that, and I think it's very important um, that uh, all, all voices are heard. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it's not just what we build, but how we build it that we're focused on here. We're very proud of the work that we've done 
uh, over the years to ensuring that there are opportunities for small businesses and MWBEs and DBEs. A capital program of our size translates to a lot of construction contracting. Lourdes mentioned that um, we're ramping up to, uh, we had over $800 million in payments to MWBE firms last year. Uh, the, you know, by far the biggest number across the state of New York for any one entity. Uh, and that will continue to ramp up. We expect to over a billion dollars a year in minority contracting um, as time goes on. We also very proud of the small business development program. It was the first in New York State. There's hundreds of millions of dollars that have moved through that program and they've supported emergency contractors, uh, uh, emerging contractors, sorry, um, not only by um, providing opportunities for contracting on uh, you know, manageable size projects, but also providing technical assistance the state legislature uh, increased the uh, the upper cap on project size for us last year to $5 million, and we're actively looking at including projects uh, of that size, as well as providing additional resources, more training, opportunities or you know, options for, for financing and financial assistance um, that support work within the small business program. So more on that to come. As part of that 25 to 29 capital program, um, we've announced commitments recently that between six and a half and seven and a half billion dollars of the $68.4 billion will go to MWDBE and SDVOB firms, um, which is a huge number. Uh, in order to do that, Lourdes and her team will certify 300 more firms as DBEs in the next five years and we're adding 350 new businesses to our small business development program. Those are hard commitments that the MTA has made associated with the next capital program uh, and hope we have your participation in all that. I also wanted to mention that we're, uh, we've recently been uh, piloting local hiring on contracts, which I think is also of great value to communities across the region that are impacted uh, in some cases by uh, construction and uh, can take advantage of those opportunities. And we're uh, planning to add local hiring requirements to $5 billion worth of contracts in the next capital program. Um, so that's our commitments uh, and the work that we're doing, as well as an outline of our current capital program and our next capital program. Wanted to give you that overview. Um, certainly hope that uh, all the, the members here are able to take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, and I, I think I'll pass that back, pass it back now either to Lourdes or to, to Terrence and happy to have some conversation with you about um, opportunities and challenges here. Thanks, Jamie. Um, Terry, I don't know if you want to open the floor to your participants for questions. Sure, we can open open the floor for questions. Uh, you know, if anybody has any questions, unmute yourself and please uh, present them to Jamie or uh, Lotus at this time. Thank you. No questions. You did good, Jamie. You were so thorough. No, As there's one more, one question, one question. Do you hear me? You can go to it. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, my name is Frank Rivera from uh, Mechanical Heating Supply. Uh, I've been an MBE vendor for 35 years now, and what I want to know is, we usually supply the contractor uh, uh, equipment. Uh, how do I get involved with that aspect of it? Or does the MTA buy equipment directly? You would sub out the electric, you would sub out the work and, and then it would be up to the contractor to buy uh, wherever he wants, or would you direct them to buy from a MBE vendor that's certified from MT, MTA now? Well, I can start. Lourdes might might fill in, but but so for MTA capital work, um, which is you know really any contracted improvements that we make to uh, you know both our transit system and also all of our back of house, all of our facilities, that happens through third party contracts for the most part. Um, and so, uh, if you're talking about MEP equipment, yeah, that we we don't really source uh, for for capital work. Uh, we don't source equipment on our own. It becomes part of a contract. 
Um, and uh, the the way that we, I sound, you've you've been around, so you know how it works. But we have we have um, uh, you know we have percentage requirements for M MWBE contracting. We enforce that um, very rigorously. And so you know if there's an opportunity for the primes to meet some of those requirements uh, by sourcing equipment, then I think that's great. Is there, Lourdes, is there anything you, you'd add to that? Yeah, I, I'd say a couple of things. Um, uh, all of the contracts that are awarded by the MTA are posted on the MTA's website. So I would recommend a couple of things. One is go through the MTA website, find those contracts that are awarded. Um, that will list not just the award, but who the prime contractor is. And that gives you an opportunity to reach out directly to the prime contractor and, and market yourself and your ability to provide your services to that contractor for that specific contract. You should also make sure that you are registered as an approved vendor with the MTA. And there is a vendor portal under which you can register. And last but not least, for all of our contracts that are have MWBE goals, and again, state-funded contracts will have MWBE goals that will approximate 30% based on you know, the availability of um, third-party vendor uh, contracting opportunities. So some may be higher or lower than 30%, but 30% is the overall goal. Um, as well, if they're federally funded, they will have DBE goals, and generally we shoot for about 22% DBE goals on our contracts. But all of our contracts, particularly our state contracts, will also have posted utilization plans. And what that means is that we require prime contractors to list the subcontractors that they will be doing business with in order to meet their goals. So not only do you have on the MTA website information on who the prime contractors are, but you can also get information on who the subcontractors are so that in your case, if you are providing um, supplies, you can reach out to the primes and the subs as a certified MBE firm and say, here I am, um, I have an opportunity to provide you some services. And what I can do after this call is I will share with Terry links to direct links to those pages on the MTA website so that he can share it with the folks that are on this call. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. I have a quick question. Um, first of all, thank you all for having this. I wanted to know, um, Lourdes, you mentioned that if we needed help getting DBE certified or New York State MWBA BE certified, we could get that help. What's the um, email address or what's the link or, or what's the phone number? We would I posted my email at my email address is in the chat. I will post it again. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to me directly and I can put you in touch with our DBE um, certification team. We also have a regular DBE and, and how to do business workshops scheduled for everyone. And again, I will share those links with Terry so that he can circulate to the folks on this team. But for the short term, if you're interested in getting DBE certification, shoot me an email and I'll put you in touch with the right folks on our team. Great. Thanks so much. A little hard to hear you. Oh. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. I just wanted to follow up. This is Ron Manabet at CNR Products. I'm in New Jersey and just wondering when it comes to DBE, I am certified here in New Jersey um, as well as a minority owned business in New Jersey. Do I also need to be certified in New York? And how do you, how do you work with New Jersey businesses? The short answer is yes. If you are certified as a DBE firm in your home state, you are eligible to be certified in New York. So again, shoot me an email and I can connect okay. you. You have to get DBE certified here in New York in order okay. to do that for us to be able to utilize you as a DBE firm, but we can certainly provide you that support. Perfect, thank you. Hi, good morning. This is Ellie Rita from Stratford Solutions. We are an IT staffing firm. Thank you. Uh, both of you for having this and Terrence uh, putting this together. Um, because I'm an IT staffing company, and I know this is more around construction, but um, what is what, what would you recommend in particular for staffing, uh, how to look for uh, projects that staffing's involved in particular IT? So we have currently, um, we develop, uh, 
Jamie, help me with the term that we I, use. It, IDIQ, it, the, IDIQs. Is that what the panels that we develop. Sorry, I, I, I'm, IQs. I'm, yeah, in, indefinite this, quantity, in, indefinite quantity contracts. Yeah, I have a brain block yeah. when it comes to that term for some crazy reason. But we have existing panels around IT consulting services. Again, if you shoot me an email with your capabilities, I can put you. And this actually, this holds true for everybody on this call. If, if you're interested um, in doing business, please shoot me an email. I can certainly put you in touch with um, our supplier diversity folks. We have one uh, person who is charged with general procurement supplier diversity here at the MTA. That would be for non-construction. So the IT work would certainly go to that individual. And then we have someone on Jamie's team that also works on supplier diversity specific to our construction projects. So I can make sure you're routed to the appropriate person. Okay, thank you. Basically, the answer to every question is email Lourdes. <laughs> <laughs> My job. This is what I'm here for. Other questions? Terry, that... you do have a question. Sorry, you do have a, a question in the chat asking about um, payments and, and access to capital. Uh, so... Uh, the question is, how does your program assist small businesses that need to cover payroll and expenses during these extended payment cycles? Um, and I'll say two things. One is uh, for pro for those businesses that are enrolled in our small business mentoring program, we do have an accelerated payment um, program in place where we do require uh, primes to pay their subs within a certain period of time. And that really is true for all of our payments. Uh, with respect to MWBE and DBE uh, payments for our subs, to the extent that you're experiencing some challenges or some concerns, we have a contract compliance team here at DDCR where we work with subs and prime contractors to try to unstick any stuck payments that, that might be for some, you know, try to figure out where exactly is the issue and, and try to resolve it so that we can facilitate that payment. We also have a variety of internal access to capital programs. Empire State Development also has a variety of financial products available to small businesses that are in need of working capital. Um, again, Terry, I will forward you a link and a contact. I think you've worked in the past with Ray Salaverios over at ESD. Yes. Um, as well. And so they have a variety of financial products that are geared for small businesses as well. So you have two entree points for access to capital support, both at the MTA as well as Empire State Development. Terrific. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, now is the time to, uh, to get these things out and get them cleared up so that you uh, hopefully uh, get in the kind of information and the questions that you need and answers to the questions that you may have. So it's not the time folks to be shot. And I'm putting my email address again in the chat for folks. Terry, I think you, oh, I thought I saw a question somewhere. Maybe they changed your mind. Okay, well, I see a fairly long question from me. Gentleman named Juan Martinez, uh, who's the business development manager for Ozar, Ozark, I guess, uh, services, which is a Hispanic owned technology company that specializes in existing, assisting New York State, New York City agencies with technology procurement services uh, and professional solutions, including cybersecurity and IT consulting. He wants, he, I guess, he just wants to also thank us for having this. And uh, he wants to connect with one of your pro uh, procurement professionals. Right. So, so we certainly will make sure you know that that happens. Um, but is there anybody else on this call uh, that has you know a question that they need a, a response to uh, before everybody bombards Lotus's email with all the kinds of things uh, that you don't want to, that you're not talking about right now? So, anyone hey, go to it. Ten. I have a question. Hey, it's Paul. This is great, guys. Thank you so much. Um, quick question. You mentioned this goal in the next five years of certifying 300 new businesses. What, and as someone that's going through the process with our partners, what are some of the big challenges that you see of, of kind of businesses going through the process of trying to get certified? Like, where do they fall off? Where do they struggle with? Are there any common things and advice that you can give? 
Yeah, I, I would say probably the, the biggest challenge for businesses in getting certified, regardless of whether you're talking about DBE or New York State MWBE or really any certification program, is being prepared um, because there is going to be a checklist of documents that are required. You know, many, not just on the DBE side, but the state as well, they need tax returns, they need your corporate documents, they need all of your materials. So I would suggest before you initiate the certification process is go through the program, download the checklist that would be provided with the state as well as DBE, compile all your paperwork in one place so that it makes it easier that when you will reach that point in the application process, because everything's done online now, everything is about uploading. You have the materials available to you and in front of you so that you can upload it and submit a completed application. Once at the MTA, once we get completed applications, it takes us less than 60 days to process the certification application. The state has committed to doing, uh, to completing New York State MWBE certification applications and getting folks certified within 90 days or less. So, but that's from the point of a completed application. If your application is not complete, all of, you know, both of those timelines just go out the window. So, the prepared you are right up front with all of the documentation that's required, the faster and smoother your process is going to go. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Hey guys, it's Chris over at Apparatus. I tried doing the uh, raising hand thing. Doesn't seem to be working for me over here, but uh, we, we currently do a lot of uh, work for uh, for the R211 train cars doing uh, pieces inside the trains. And we're told all the time that there's work that we should be doing direct for the MTA. When we get around to finding somebody to talk to, definitely going to guess that it's not the right person to talk to. So who would be the right person in procurement to reach out to and happy to Happy to hit up uh, Lourdes, but. Uh, so I'm sorry, say that first part again. What is it? What services do you provide? Hello? Did he, did he say rail parts? Oh, wow. My mic did mute. So yeah, we're metal fabrication. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I don't know at what point the mic muted on me. No, I think you were asking for for guidance on who to speak to. I, and again, I I would just say start. Let's start with me, okay. um, so that I can make sure that I'm pointing you in the right direction. I I think you know a, a business such as yours, which is unusual, um, we'd love to talk to <laughs> because you know we're always looking to broaden uh, the the number of firms and types of firms that we're doing business with. So so certainly reach out to me. Okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Sure, go to it. Good morning, Lourdes. Good morning, Jamie. Um, I'm Luke. I'm a certified applicator and owner of Divine Pest Control, and we offer services both to commercial and residential properties in the New York City area. And I, I was listening to everything you were saying, and I just kind of want to know step by step. So the first step is to be New York State WMBE certified, and then do I register as a vendor under the MTA and then email you and contact you? Or can you give me a step by step of the process exactly, please? Yeah, I I, I wouldn't. I, I think you can do this all concurrently. Um, you don't have to be certified to do business with the MTA. You don't have to be certified to do business with any New York State agency or authority. So I would certainly submit your materials to the MTA um, on the vendor portal so that we can make sure that we have you and you should certainly pursue contracting opportunities. The added benefit to certification is that the MTA, like all New York State agencies and authorities, have very specific goals for engagement of MW and DBE firms. And so we're looking to do business specifically with um, businesses that are certified. So I would run both of those efforts concurrently. Pursue your New York State MWBE certification, get yourself DBE certified if you haven't already, and get registered on the MTA portal uh, so that you're getting as wide uh, 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 exposure as possible um, on both sides of the table. 
Okay, thank you very much. Other questions? Um, I have one. Uh, hey, Lourdes, uh, thank you for all the insights. Uh, my name is Aparna and I own a women-based um, um, firm. I'm not certified anywhere. Uh, I come from IT world, but I started this um, uh, business recently. Uh, I My main focus is to go towards cybersecurity and GRC governance and compliance uh, and, you know, work with the state uh, and I wanted to explore opportunities with the state uh, because you just said that, you know, uh, we don't have to be uh, certified to do any business with the state. So for a uh, woman like me or for a company like me, uh, like mine, where I did not do any um, cybersecurity staffing, but I have the skill set. How would uh, uh, how would you uh, uh, like what are your two cents uh, for me to move forward with the state? I, I would say that you should start with looking at, again, there are 97 state agencies and authorities in the state of New York. I would narrow that down to maybe five to, or seven mm -hmm. firms. So there's a little bit of homework you need to do on your end, but try to identify those firms which you think are um, most relevant to the goods and services that your firm provides. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you'll go crazy trying to reach right. all 97, mm -hmm. right? And then once you've identified your the your target agencies, reach e each agency has a counterpart to me. So every single agency in the state of New York has a chief diversity officer or an MWBE liaison. Reach mm -hmm. out to that individual and then um, ask for their assistance and support and getting in front of the right folks within their agency. Have your capability statement ready, make mm -hmm. sure that they know who you are and how you bring value to mm -hmm. the needs of that specific agency. Um, again, with me, it's it's connecting with me so that I can connect you with our supplier diversity team oh, so they can mm -hmm. let you know what's available. Um, don't sleep on getting certified. If you can get certified as, as an MWBE firm or DBE firm, or SCVOB firm, you should, because okay. many agencies, again, you don't have to be certified, but we're always looking for firms to get certified because we have to meet our goals. Gotcha. And so there are firms like yours, if you're certified, that can help us achieve that. Uh, so so most certainly get certified. Okay. Um, I'm happy to stay on. Um, I think we're, we're due to speak until at least 1130, but I want to be respectful of Jamie's time. Um, I don't... I, no, you know, I don't no, want us to hang on keep, if no one keep, has no, questions for keep me. Keep going. I always, you know, we work hand in hand, but I always learn a lot hearing Lourdes uh, okay. give it, give advice <laughs> to uh, to MWB and DB firms. So yeah, happy to be All here. Right. And if there are questions okay. for me, uh, you know, go for it. Uh, hello, I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Anton. I'm the owner of Goldburn Logistics. So basically, if I just send you over an email, you can connect me with your uh, specialist, the procurement specialist over at MTA. Yeah. Uh, as well, and I'm also certified. I'm a New Jersey based uh, firm. I'm um, certified in New Jersey uh, MBE and SBE, and I was trying okay. to get certified as a DBE, and I'll probably need some help with that. I've been working with uh, Apex Accelerator. I have a representative over there to help me with that. I've been working. Yeah. I have a cap capability statement, so I'm trying to get all my ducks in a yeah. row. I'm just need some, you know, a little guidance. Yeah, Apex is the, the Apex for. Um, Groups are are terrific resources. Uh, those are federally funded technical assistance firms that can help you get DBE certified as well. We would need you to be DBE certified in the state of New Jersey before we can start a New York state. You have to get certified oh. in your home state first. Okay. Um, so you definitely should reach should focus on that. Is Apex helping you with the, with your New Jersey certification? Uh, yes. Um, I've been, okay. I have a guy, Mr. Omar Sharifi, but uh. He's been real busy, so I've been just going online, um, doing it on my own. I got okay. all my documents in order and stuff like that. But if okay. I do, if I if I send you an email, can you help with that or and assist the, possibly whatever you can do? I gotcha. Do, send me an email. Um, I actually am connected to the folks that run the New Jersey uh, Port Authority. So, so here in New York, there are four certifying DBE agencies. The MTA is one, 
uh, New York State uh, Department of Transportation, the Niagara Frontier Academy, and the Port Authority. So the Port Authority can certify you for New York or New Jersey. So mm -hmm. you may want to reach out to the Port Authority, and I can certainly put you in touch with the appropriate folks there. They can help you with your New Jersey certification, and they can also help you get New, New York certified. Unfortunately for us, we're you know they're they're a by state agency. We're only New York, so we can only do New York. But the port can do both New York and New Jersey. I was actually in their portal trying to get MBE and DBE, and I had all my documents in. But the time I had put an extension, and my time ran out. I didn't get everything in in, in time, and I got stuck. Yeah. But I was okay. Getting, I had. I want to start it back over the process. Okay. So thanks Reach a lot. Out I appreciate to me again, that. But keep keep in mind that the Port Authority's MBE certification is not New York State. MBE certification. New, the Port Authority does its own certification program. So you can be certified as an MBE by the Port Authority and be eligible for credit as an MBE for Port Authority projects. Unfortunately, you would not be eligible as an MBE for New York State projects that the MTA is handling. Okay. Uh, you'd have to get New York State certified in order to do that. All right. I want, I want to get all of them. If I can. <laughs> All right. Let's, think, let's see really if I can um, help you get in front of some folks. Thank you so much. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Sure. Hi, this is Ellie Rita again from Stratford Solutions. I, um, I while we, I had you, I thought I'd, I'll ask the question. I was used uh, for an MTA project in the utilization. And so I placed a staffing person uh, for, for like a facilities manager and they, um, Someone told me if you're being used in utilization, I have to do something through MTA as well, or it's only the prime that has to do any the paperwork or anything. Well, you would have to submit. You would we'd have to make sure that you're certified and we do require all of our subs to certify payments. So we require our primes to pay their subs. We require our subs to confirm that they receive the money. So there. Okay. So once you re, once you submit your invoicing to your prime, there mm -hmm. will more than likely be some follow up required from you as a sub, because we want to make sure that you're getting your money and that you're performing as you need to perform. Okay, it's been about two months that I've been on the project, so okay. I haven't been paid. So I'll just be waiting for something from MTA to come to me. Once you get the the payment, you should have that information in your subcontracting. Uh, in your subcontract, uh, what your requirements are with respect to reporting. So you should take another look at the contract. Okay. And again, if that information is unclear, let me know and we can try and get you um, some answers. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I have a question. Um, my name is Naya Wilson from Dialogue 9, a mental health and wellness business. And I know we talked a lot about technology and rebuilding infrastructure, but I was wondering how much of the five-year plan considers mental health and well-being for staff and MTA workers. That's a very that's a very good question. It's a very important um, issue for our operating agencies. I have to say that it's not that's not a um, you know this is a capital investment plan, so it's about the physical infrastructure of the system. Um, and, you know, at the same time, we, as Lourdes mentioned at the beginning, we have a number of operating agencies uh, that run the different components of our system and are responsible for our labor force um, and, uh, and, and do address issues like that. I, I can't say I have a lot of expertise to be able to respond, yeah. uh, you know, on the substance of that, but, but, um, but they're, they're, it's definitely a very important issue. That's, that's, thanks, Jamie. That's, that's a non-capital procurement um question and and certainly someone that i want to put you in touch with our supplier diversity team that's not construction related um i'm not i don't have that level of detailed insight on the contracting opportunities with respect to mental health or subcontracting you know external workforce programming support programming um that's what our supplier diversity team would be able to be best positioned to answer um, but also, as I said earlier, um, look throughout the state because there are other agencies that are focused on, uh, you know, there's an Office of Mental Health. There's, you know, a variety of health focused agencies that will more than likely have some significant contracting, subcontracting opportunities for the field that you're operating in. 
Thank you. Would I be able to reach out to you to get clarity on those agencies and who I could reach out to? I got Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question, if it's possible. Sure. sure. Logistics. Uh, I, I, how do I start? Like, if I want to start researching to see uh, the need of a logistic provider in the MTA, like moving freight uh, services and things of that nature to see uh, where I'm needed at, where can I fill the void? With that company, is there any type of research I can do to to look well, into Lord, that? Uh, Lourdes probably has a good advice, but the she mentioned earlier on that you know we'll circulate where all our procurements go up, um, and though you know those are pretty detailed, um, you know that we we tend to you know either fully design projects so that they're 100% ready to go, just you know pass over to the contractor, or we're getting to 30% design, and so a lot of the specs are laid out. Um, so you know that reviewing some of those should give you some sense of what kinds of services we're in need of. Anything you, in addition to that, Lourdes? No, I think that's right. You you go to the go to the website, look at the utilization plans. There are pre pre bid conferences that are held as well. Um, you you to the extent that you find out information about those, you should be attend. You should attend that as well. Did you put the website in the chat? Because I didn't get that website. What I will do is and just um for to the um sorry for the as a follow up, I will be sharing with Terry for his distribution to the folks on this call. Uh, the links to the MTA vendor portal, as well as the link uh, to the page that has our procurement and utilization plans so that you can see where all the subcontracting opportunities are. I will share information on any upcoming workshops with respect to DBE certification and how to do business with the MTA. I will also share information on ESD's access to capital programs um, and some contact information there. So you should have all of that available. Whatever is not addressed in those materials that are shared, again, you have my email address in the chat and we can um, try to help you most directly. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have one question. My name is Bruce Taylor um, from SBLD Studio. I'm a lighting designer. Um, already certified um, with the state and city agencies. Um, this call's really been focused a lot on uh, procurement and, you know, um, utilization and contractor work. But from a design side, I mean, we specifically do a lot of design work. Um, and as a lighting designer, we are typically brought in through like an architect. But with all this capital stuff, are there any opportunities to contract directly with the MTA? Or do we um, have to go through uh, like, say, a prime architect who's like, you know, developing a new station or something like that? Can anyone speak to that? Yeah, well, there's a couple different ways to answer the question. I, um, you know, I, I mean, honestly, I, I think at 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 the scale that we work at, you know, we do tend to have architects, um, you know, sort of, you know, generally, uh, you know, generally, are there architects and engineers, honestly, who are holding the the contracts? Um, mm -hmm. We we tend more and more to bring in general engineering uh, consultants um, and they form teams it, just because at scale, you know, and and the way we've tried to integrate work uh, much more, which I think is really to the benefit of the system, it means that some of the specialties um, are best, you know, folded in. Having said that, we have, L Lourdes has been a champion of this. Um, we have used our discretionary contracting ability to bring on uh, minority uh, design firms. Um, again, I think it tends to be architects who may hold subcontracts for specialties like yours, mm -hmm. um, but that's at a, uh, you know, the, the a, a more manageable scale, like a, up to a million and a half dollars uh, in contract value. And we're further considering um, how we bring, uh, you know, and support design firms as part of our program. Lourdes has, you know, talked a little bit about um, whether we can do some of the small business mentoring for design firms. That's, we're not, uh, we don't have the the legislative, we don't have the law that allows us to do that, but we may in the future. And it, Lord, is anything you'd, you'd uh, yeah. add to I, that? I'd, yeah, I'd say that's where the utilization plans come into play. Um, so the utilization plans will list all of the subcontracting firms that are going to be used on a specific project, which will include the architectural firms. And that gives you the opportunity to reach out to that architectural firm directly and with a specific project in mind, you can say, hey, you know, I, I understand that you got awarded this contract by the MTA. This is what I can do. And this is the value I can bring 
to to your activities and your efforts. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have one more question, sorry. Go to it. <laughs> Um, Mr. Clark, it has something to do with, uh, it's not with this webinar. I was trying to reach a Ms. Riddick and I haven't been able to reach you about a Tompkins Venture logistics seminar you had a few months ago that I missed. Is it possible I can connect with you to try to get some information from that webinar? Sure, we, we'll, we can take care of that. If you put uh, your information in the uh, chat, um, I'll make sure you get that information that you're looking for from uh, requiring gonna... logistics. I'll put it in a Q and A for some reason my chat's disabled, so I'll put it in the Q and A right now. I don't know I'm what's sorry. going on, but okay. okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I have a quick question. What's it? Uh, I know that there was mention of a funding holdup earlier, but can anyone comment on the uh, number of design build RFPs that are going to be released within the end of the can calendar year? Um, well. Um, you know, it's it's a good question. You seem to have maybe uh, in the way you ask the question, understand uh, a little bit about how, you know, some of the, the constraints that we have on us right now. We are doing everything we can. You know, if you look at our $55 billion current program and you say, you know, we, we had actually awarded about $27 billion of it, of the $28 billion left, about 16 of it is limited by congestion pricing. We're trying as best as we can to get the other $12 billion out the door into the market um, by the end of the year or first quarter of next year. So um, expect to see, uh, you know, that the, at least that um, that component of the, the program, the RFP should all be out in the next few months. And then, um, you know, uh, you know, at some point, you know, according to the, the governor, um, you know, we will have the restoration of that that, you know, the rest of that funding and, and those RFPs will follow shortly afterwards. We're uh, we're ready to go. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. Anybody else? Speak now. Terry, you're okay. um, I can't hear you. I don't know if other folks can hear you. Can you all hear me? I can. Yes. Yeah. Very Anyone good. Has another question. She has her hand up. I'll do it. Naya, did you have another question? No, I did not. Forgive me. I didn't notice my hand was raised. Thank you. Uh, OK, well, I have a question for you, Jamie. Sure, uh, Terry. What happens if? Uh, this whole issue of congestion pricing ends up being struck down. How does this affect what it is that you all are trying to do, given uh, the amount of money that this was uh, to be brought out from congestion uh, pricing? If they, if all of a sudden, you know, given, I mean, obviously we're in a kind of weird political situation and the like, uh, but what happens if it gets, if this gets uh, denied? Well, um, you know, when the I, I you know, there's a couple of ways of answering that. Um, when the you know, we we received word of the pause, um, mm -hmm. we we went and there's a presentation we made to our board in July. That's if you're interested in getting into the detail, it's worth um, finding it uh, on on YouTube and watching it. Um, we went and we reprioritized our capital program to ensure mm -hmm. that with the funds that we had left we were investing in the most important state of good repair work um, mm -hmm. because we have to keep our system running. So there are projects, uh, you know, it includes a lot of stations that we were meant to make ADA accessible. It includes mm -hmm. um, re-signaling, uh, updating the signals in the subway system. You know, these are things that are really important to the future of the system, but sure. they're, they're, they're not, um, you know, the system will keep running without them. Um, and so, so we've done that. We've, you know, tried to just be careful and responsible in managing, um, you know, what, what we're building. And then we await the, uh, news about the, the funding. I, I will say though, to her credit, you know, the governor has been clear, uh, this entire time. She has the intention of ensuring that that funding, you know, is restored. Uh, I, I don't, you know, the, as you say, I mean, the, the politics are somebody else's concern, not mine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll figure out exactly how they want to do that. But we, we, uh, we always say that we take her at our word and, and uh, assume that that funding will be restored. Okay. And, okay. and I just, you know, look, it's for everybody that's on the call. I, you know, it's, you're all, 
you know, uh, contractors, you're doing important work um, and providing important services, but we're all also uh, citizens of this region. And um, I think everybody recognizes, you know, we got a, we, we have valued our asset, the MTA system at a trillion and a half dollars. And right. uh, everybody here knows, you know, whether it's a, as a homeowner or somebody that's doing capital work or, you know, um, you have to invest a certain amount uh, in an asset, especially as it depreciates um, in order to keep it in a state of good repair and have it maintain its value. And so that's, that's what we need to do. And, you know, there's no question. I don't think anybody really questions that we have to make major investments in our system. Otherwise we're going to go back to those days when, you know, uh, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't get anywhere on the subway, you know, with the summer of hell that, you know, all of this stuff is a direct result of not making adequate capital investments. And so we all just have to, you know, stand behind this um, and, uh, and make sure that, you know, voices are heard. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions before we close? Okay, well, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank both, both you, Jamie and, and Lourdes for providing this information to speak with, with uh, our constituents this morning. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I've learned a lot about MTA that I didn't know, uh, and I think that our clients get a, have gotten a better understanding of how you know the largest transportation system in in the United States works, uh, which is extremely important, and how they do business. And you know, when you're talking about uh, a capital plan that's in the you know of the size that this is, you know, it's something that we certainly want to make sure that any of our clients that have services that are that are that can be used by the MTA have now the information to be able to pursue those opportunities. I'm going to thank both of you for for your time this morning for doing that, and for my constituents that participated. Thank you for your time. And once again, you know this these, is these kinds of uh, webinars and programs that we feel are very important, so you get the information firsthand from skilled professionals that work for the organizations. You don't get secondhand information or somebody's opinion of what should be happening. You heard it from the people who actually do this for a living. So I thank you all for coming. Uh, we greatly appreciate everybody's time this morning and wish everybody a great rest of the day, uh, rest of this week and weekend. And if anybody is going to Atlanta, and I know I'll be seeing you, Lotus, uh, we will see you next week in Atlanta at the National Minority Supply Development Council, Council's uh, annual conference, which starts on technically Sunday the 20th and runs through the 23rd. Have a great day. Thanks so much great. for your time. Thank Thanks, you so Terry. much. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Jamie. You. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day, folks. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah.